Well, for a lot of people, getting a haircut is a fairly routine task, but for others, it can be a dreaded anxiety-inducing experience because most salons mold their pricing and their styles around gender. People who do not identify with either group can feel excluded and afraid to express their style preferences. But there is a Toronto salon owner who is doing a lot to change this. Joining us is the owner of Fuss Hair Studio, Kristen Rankin. Good to have you with us this morning. Thanks, Emery. I was surprised to learn that there, there was an anxiety, that there was a stress for people that can head into a hair salon. Explain to me what happens. Well, in our community, we have basically two ways of pricing historically haircuts. We have uh, pricing them by men's or women's cuts. Right. So when you walk into a salon and you don't necessarily identify as that one of those genders, that can cause a lot of anxiety. You don't really know where you fit in. So right off the bat, things are not looking so hot. You uh, run a studio here in Toronto. It's called Fuss Hair Salon. And you used to also price according to gender. What changed that? Uh, well, I had an email once from a client who just had some concerns around it and had, was, a, was a woman who had short hair and I listened to her, we talked about it and immediately realized that I was pricing according to what I was taught in hair school. You kind of just like, when you open a salon you, or any business, you put your head down and you just go. Mm -hmm. And uh, as soon as I realized that that was a problem and especially because I'm part of the queer community, I needed to change it immediately, so I did. And you and I were talking, I said, this was an idea waiting to be born because the response to your salon and how it has gone global is astounding. Tell us about the reaction you've had. Yeah, it's been kind of um, insane. Uh, I've been traveling a little bit, talking to folks in a lot of different places about like workshops, about inclusivity. Um, I, together with a community center here called the 519, we created a gender affirming salon guide. So it's teaching people how to do gender free hair consultations so that you can make people fit in or feel like they fit in right. using pronouns and talking about the person first because Hair has no gender, so there's right. absolutely no reason we need to categorize it that way. All right, and you have the Dress Code Project and the Gender Free Haircut Club. What are those? The Dress Code Project is the not-for-profit that I run in order to get all of this information out. Um, we have 160 salons in five different countries now. We've done that in one year. Wow. And the Gender Free Haircut Club is like what we call the, the Dress Code Project side hustle. <laughs> so we started that because we thought it's awesome that people can come in and get these haircuts, but what if they can't afford it? Right. So the Gender Free Haircut Club is something that go, we do twice a month, or once every two months, rather. Mm -hmm. We go to different dress code project salons in the city, and the stylists and the owners of the salon volunteer their space and time for four hours to give haircuts to uh, the youth and the LGBTQ community. And it's now actually happening in Vancouver next week. It's already happened once in Vancouver. It's happened in Edmonton, and it's happened in S Sydney, Australia. Uh when you are giving these instructions to salons, if there's salon owners that are out there right now across the country that are saying, I would like to know some of those guidelines, what are some of the things that you include, some simple things? Uh, just referring to pronouns, for example, not assuming that someone matches the, the pronoun that you would use matches them visually, so their gender expression. Um, so you would just call them by their name if you weren't sure. Yeah. Um, not, not talking about hair as in, oh, would you like a feminine haircut? You know, you right. want to say like, oh, you like the sides short and faded with a longer bang or something like that. So right. it's just so talking about the characteristics of the hair. Of hair and not associating it with either gender. Yeah, exactly. It's a fantastic project. I mean, 160 different salons in just a year. It is incredible. Uh, we're proud that it's Canadian. Kristen, thank yeah. you so much. Thank you. If you're interested in checking out a salon under the Dress Code Project, you can check that on our website. It's yourmorning.ca.